Welcome to a very special Ascend Life on the Autism Spectrum. Here with Autism uh, Awareness Day with the Giants, our guests include uh, Farham Zachariah, who has created Autism Awareness Day with the Giants for many, many years, uh, a predominant San Francisco attorney and Ascend advisor, Jim Brown, uh, and Ascend members, uh, Wes Lamb and Andrew Bixler. Andrew, would you care to begin? Okay. Um, yeah, and just tell me, uh, and exactly how did Autism Awareness Day get to be? So in about 2007, uh, we had an initiative to get a lot of our alumni more involved with some of our special events and our fundraiser programs. Um, Will Clark, as most Giants fans are aware of, is one of our most coveted, well-known alumni. Um, and most of us were, were pretty aware of the fact that he, on his own, was involved with Autism Speaks, um, a few various charity tournaments that were, uh, that were put together to support autism, raise funds and awareness. Um, so it was, in a way, kind of an obvious selection for us to reach out to Will, um, and he was very quick to respond to say that he wanted to really help grow this program and support it however he could. So, and that was in 2007. Okay. And what makes you interested in and why are you interested in promoting autism awareness? Um, so back in uh, back in 06, 07, uh, we we had a cancer awareness night. Um, it was more of a league-wide program. Um, the individual teams were then kind of asked um, and really given support by the league. Hey, if you want to do something on a local level, um, you've got our support. So. Uh, at the time, we didn't really have too many programs and events and promotions lined up um, outside of ballpark-wide programs. Um, again, because Will was so uh, passionate and was a huge advocate already, um, we figured that it was it was a good program to do. Um, MLB was kind of giving us a heads up that they were probably going to roll out a league-wide autism uh, collaboration with all the clubs, so it made a lot of sense for us. Um, autism Speaks, which is the uh, one of the major arms nationwide is based, is not based here, but they have a huge presence in San Francisco, so um, the stars were kind of aligning for us. Jim? How have you seen the uh, event grow over the many years that you've been here? Um, if you look at it just from a sheer numbers perspective, we've had more and more people come out every year, so uh, in terms of ways people can support and participate, we put together unique ticket packages, so if you want to get a a special item or shirt or bobblehead that's geared or themed around Will Clark, you have to purchase a specific ticket. So we've seen those numbers go from 500 in year one to about 2,500, um, and that's been pretty consistent, and it just means that we've been able to raise more and more money every year and awareness. That's absolutely terrific. Do you anticipate uh, future developments as the program continues to evolve and grow? We hope so. I think uh, this program uh, has really kind of opened up the doors. Um, our community relations and PR team has actually been able to work with a lot of our alumni to get them more involved with causes that are near and dear to their heart. Um, you know, it means a lot to our team that we were able to kind of roll this out with Will initially and to see other alumni really um, come to us and say, hey, we want to support this cause or, or raise awareness for this event or initiative. Um, in terms of Autism Awareness Night, I think uh, where we are right now, uh, we've gotten a, a consistent number of attendees every year, and I think there's more corporate interest for uh, corporations to really kind of support and step up as well, which is a great indication of where things are going. Along those lines, how could uh, either corporations or interested individuals get more involved in autism on this side okay, going forward? Uh, so two of our main uh, beneficiaries, Autism Speaks, which is a, a league-wide uh, nonprofit, as I'm sure most of you are aware, um, AutismSpeaks.org, uh, Anova Education, those are uh, two key partners that we have. There's, there's quite a few of them, actually. Um, that's kind of step one for a lot of Giants fans. They usually reach out to us saying, like, how can we get involved? So we work really closely with our community partners. Um, there's a lot of walks that take place in the Bay Area specific to autism. Um, and we're always looking for volunteers, ways to really kind of um, support outreach and, and promote these initiatives. So there's uh, there's quite a few ways to get involved in mm -hmm. that, uh, and that outreach just continues. It doesn't really stop. So, is there a particular uh, 
web address that our viewers could uh, connect with you or people involved in the uh, program? Well, so if people want to uh, work directly with the Giants, um, we usually encourage them to reach out to us directly, and that's um, special events mm -hmm. at sfgiants.com. Um, if they want to reach out directly to the nonprofit partners, that's autismspeaks.org and anovaeducation.org. Excellent. Jim. Yes. So um, it's really neat that there's been such an increased number of fans participating. Uh, are there ways that just the everyday fans that are here can uh, easily participate? Yeah, there is. Um, outside of our Autism Awareness Day, uh, which is obviously on Saturday, uh, June 10th, we've got a continuous campaign. Um, fans can go on sfgiants.com slash care um, to learn more uh, how we can kind of continue the campaign, which is really ongoing. Um, a couple new programs that we're working to launch, and uh, all that information is on the website. Terrific. You, you seem very passionate, and you seem a good <laughs> spokesperson. Maybe you could share with the audience uh, the part of your job you like the best. Um, well, I mean, it's going to sound very cliche to say this because I'm, I'm here doing this, but I think the programs that we've done that enable us to work with our alumni, uh, raise not just money but awareness, I mean, I think that's something that we all collectively take a lot of pride in. Um, a lot of us are fortunate. We grew up in the Bay Area. We're Giants fans. So we, we know these guys as players, but we also know them what they do you know, off the field, and it's, it's, it's pretty special when you've got players that are, are actively willing to support so I think everyone in the Giants front office is pretty lucky in that regard. Fantastic. And we're very lucky to have you and the other people involved in the program helping us all out. We can do that. We really appreciate your guys' support. Well, thank you. Thank you. Wes, I understand you have some more questions. I do have at least one more question. So let's say a Giants, a Giants fan cannot attend Autism Awareness Day or Night at AT Park. What can Giants fans do to support the cause? I think if, if fans can attend the event that we host, um, and we're hoping that we can host this more than just once a year, I think that's kind of our, mm -hmm. our goal moving forward. Um, but if they aren't able to attend the event, they can go on sfgiants.com slash care, and there's a specific link um, that has been built for Autism Awareness Night specifically. Um, I think that's a, that's a great first step for visiting our nonprofit website directly, which is autismspeaks.org or anovaeducation.org. And now, well, we are very pleased to have Derek Law of the San Francisco Giants as our guest. Take it from there, folks. Tell us, Derek, tell us about your background in the autism community. Um, well, I haven't had uh, much experience yet uh, with it. Um, obviously, I know about Autism Speaks and everything because uh, my brother is actually on the spectrum as well. So. Um, I'm fortunate enough to have uh, a couple of the Giants community members and then uh, Will Clark actually kind of get me involved in you know, starting the process of actually getting involved more. So does your um, brother, um, what, what are his interests? Is he into baseball like you or does he, how often does he um, um, see you? He's not really into baseball as much as, as I am obviously. Um, he likes the fact that I play baseball for the Giants. Um, but uh, he's really into trains. He loves trains, uh, loves drawing trains and writing stories about them and stuff like that. Uh, so um, when did your brother find out, or when did you and your family find out that he was on the autism spectrum? Um, I think he was about maybe four or five years old, I think, uh, around that age. And any, uh, were there like any traits that um, were familiar, like, most, there are some things that are like repetitive that they like to do, or there's things that, their abilities that they are, they're really good at than most or something. Yeah, um, actually he was actually, um, like I said, he loves trains. Yeah. So he was really attracted to that, maybe we thought it was a hobby, something like that. Yeah. But uh, he was really drawn towards that extra, and I mean, he wouldn't pay any attention to us, he was just all about the trains, and okay. had to do that. And you know, he would fuss a little bit here and there if you'd take him away or something like that. So, uh, yeah. so does he? So he plays with trains. Uh, does he ride them? Does he like to ride them too? Or um, anything? I don't, to I don't think he's ever ridden a real train uh, actually. Yeah. But uh, he's like real Thomas the Tank. He loves Thomas the Tank. Uh, so he kind of relates everything to that. Jim. 
Let me ask Derek, one of the things that may be interesting to members of the community is how old your brother is and uh, how he's doing. Um, he's 22 years old. Um, he just got out of a, a college program with his one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, her name is Kim, and she's been uh, a blessing to you know our family. Uh, she kind of takes care of him, and you know takes him places that you know my parents couldn't take him because they they actually own a personal care home, so it's hard for them to you know get him out of the house and stuff like that. So she's been kind of like a second mother actually to him. And uh, right now he has a, a job. He uh, he works at a library three days a week. Uh, Gets paid to do it, and uh, he loves it. Uh, he's made a bunch of friends. I'm not. I, he doesn't even like me anymore. You know? <laughs> he always hangs out with his friends. I go home, and I see him, and he doesn't even want to hang out with me. He wants to hang out with his friends. Um, no, but it's been great for him. Uh, I mean, it's kind of teaching him life skills and all that stuff, and you know, concepts of money. So he's uh, he's really getting into that. Fantastic. Obviously, playing professional baseball is pretty cool. Right. right. And uh, I assume it's a dream you've had for a long time and how you're living it. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe you could share what kind of dreams you have for your brother. Um, well, obviously, uh, you know, he has a job. It's not really like a, a real, real, you know, grown up job. Um, hopefully, one day I'd like to see him actually get to that point where he could have a job like that. And, uh, you know, not really, you know, fend for himself because I mean I'll always be there for him. My parents will always be there for him. My wife, um, but something, something along those lines where you know he, you know he gets it and it's an everyday thing for him because uh, I mean he's he's a big repetitious person. Like anything he does, he has to do it every day. So uh, I'd like to see that, and I think he'd be really good at it as well. Fantastic. Excellent. Since you have along with your family first-hand experience with a member of the autistic community. Do you have any words for our viewers who may have someone in their family? Any advice you have for them? Um, I'd say, I mean, if you're just finding out, I mean, patience for sure. Um, you know, they're learning and, you know, maybe a little slower than we are, but uh, patience for sure. Um, I mean, they're just like everybody else. You know, they're just in their own world sometimes, and, and uh, they're living life just like us. So uh, patience, I'd say, for sure, is the number one thing for me. Uh, I mean, uh, all my friends, you know, they, they'll come over, and, you know, they treat them exactly like family, just like they are. I mean, they're just as much friends as they are to me. So um, inclusion as well. I mean, he always wants to feel included in everything that we did. And we'd involve him in everything, you know, whether he couldn't do it or not, try and teach him to do it, stuff like that. I guess the answer is have a big heart. And a yeah. Big yeah, that's a good answer right there. I like that. Have a big heart. Okay. Jim. Derek, I, I know that uh, you've had some uh, adversities in your life. Has your experiences with your brother and uh, his challenges helped you in any way? Can you talk um, about that? Absolutely. Um, I mean, baseball's a game of failure, so you know, you're going to fail a lot. But uh, you know, with him, you know, you kind of take the mentality that he has. Uh, he never has a bad day. I mean, he never has a bad day. So, I mean, you kind of think of that way. I mean, if he can never have a bad day, then why can I have a bad day? Just because I go out and do bad. And as with surgery, I mean, yeah, it was, it was a huge bummer. It was a big, uh, you know, kind of halted my career for a little bit. But, you know, at the same time, you know, FaceTime and him, he's always happy, so it's like, I can't be, I can't be mad, I can't be sad, I can't, you know, so I kind of just go off of that and, you know, live life like, like there's no problems ever. That's terrific. Oh, I got a question. What, what would you, what would you want to do differently on, on the field in, while playing, while playing a, ga a game? What would I want to do differently? I like what I'm doing right now. Um, <laughs> if I can hit, that'd be great. I don't know if I'm a good hitter, but I'd like to be able to hit. Excellent. Well, thank you. Uh, once again, we really appreciate you being on, Derek, and we hope in the future uh, we can get you more involved in the ASN community, at least when you're, you're here in town. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. I've um, been trying to get involved uh, now, kind of like my whole career. I haven't really had a platform like that to to take that off and now that I'm here 
uh, it's kind of nice to be able to get into the community like that. I just, uh, well, I didn't get introduced to Will, but he kind of came up to me, and I, d I had no idea his son had autism and was on the spectrum. And, you know, we kind of just got to talking a little bit, and, uh, you know, he's going to help me get involved a little bit, which is great. Thanks, son. What advice can you give for fans on the spectrum? Uh, just be like everybody else and cheer us on. I know it's, it's been a little rough year right now, but, uh, you know, patience is key. We'll, uh, we'll be good, I think, later on. Make a little run here. Excellent. Well, once again, thank you very much for your time, Derek, and very best of luck tonight and throughout the rest of the season. Go Giants! Yeah, Go Giants! Thank you. Yeah. Giants. Well, folks, this has been our special report from the field at AT&T Park. Until next time, I'm Keith Halperin for Send Life on the Autism Spectrum. Until then, have a great one. Bye-bye.